Hello, everyone. Welcome. Today, I have Judy, a veteran Sunlighter, veteran homeschool mom, homeschooled all three of her children, and also works for Sunlight with me. Um, and Barbara, who is a veteran homeschool mom. Both of her boys use Sunlight for, for their whole life. Um, and now she's an advisor. And today, we're going to talk a little bit about um, the state that we are all in. So um, we, I'm calling this Stay Calm and Homeschool at Home. I have had numerous conversations with friends about what they can do. And I've sat around and I've talked to them and I've tried to reassure them. And I realized that there are tons of people in the world right now who their children's a school has been canceled at this point and they don't know what to do. And so I thought I'd round up these two veteran homeschool moms because like I said, not everyone can talk to their friends who work for a homeschool company um, and get a little advice going. So, um, you know, I hope that you guys find value in this. We would love to know if you have any additional questions. Um, so please leave them in the comments. Also, if you are, a homeschooler and you know someone who keep you know who needs a little guidance right now please share share this we'd love to um share a little bit of this knowledge with the world uh and let them you know know that we're all in it and we're gonna get through it so first let's start with one of the questions i get often how can um uh, hold on this isn't a question this is what i think like we are a homeschool community so how can we help how can we assist these people? I We've been pulling together on the inside, trying to come up with ideas. So what do you guys think? How, how can we come together as a community and share what we know? Well, Judy? that's a really good question. I think we have to, um, first of all, realize that everybody is uncertain and maybe scared. And as adults, we're watching the news, which, by the way, turn it off <laughs> because... I you know, it's good to check in once in a while to know what's going on in the world, but turn it off the rest yeah. of the time because it just feeds the fear. Um, but I think what we forget sometimes as adults and as parents is that our kids pick up on that fear. And so I think we have to relax and I think we have to take a deep breath. And I think we need to find ways to reassure our kids. And in doing that, I think we will reassure ourselves. So you know, cuddle up with your kids on the couch and read a good movie. Um, find, read a good movie, read a good book. Find a good movie on TV awesome. that you can sit and laugh together, you know, pop some popcorn, make some snacks, stretch out on the living room floor, whatever. But find ways in these first few days with all the changes going on to just have fun with your kids and smile a lot and hug a lot and just reassure one another. We all yeah. need a hug right now, yeah. for sure. Absolutely. And I'll add to that a little bit. You know, if you um, if you've got Spotify or you know some other music, you know, put on put on some great music. You know, in our family, um, the boys, my sons, they love to listen to seventies and eighties music. So we, you know, put in anything. Put on some great, um, you know, gospel music. It's just, just and that just livens up the tone. Um, in the house. So um, yeah, like Judy said, just cuddle, read a book um, and just relax, you know, maybe go mop a floor with them, show them how to sew on a button, you know, just stuff like that. <laughs> we did cupcakes the other day. We just, there you go. <laughs> the other thing is we are listening to A Wrinkle in Time. Typically I would read that book. I think I own the book, but I was like, let's just listen to it while we're playing Legos. Like, let's not think about anything too specific. So that's another idea. Um, okay, so what tips can we give for schooling at home? All these parents sort of left wondering how to even approach this. I'll, um, yeah, that's a good question. So um, so an idea is, um, and I've, I've talked to customers that are doing this, they, they are introducing things slowly. They don't wake up, you know, all of a sudden Monday and saying, oh, my gosh, I've got to cover all, everything right now today, you know, and I've got till 3.30 to do it. Um, so start slowly. You know, if one day, you know, one week, you spend a whole week just reading books. 
like that's all you do. You know, if you've got some books on the on the shelf, just ask your kids like, hey, what do you want to read today? Sit there, talk about it, talk about the you know the content, that sort of thing. So just start reading. Um, and then if you uh, if you're doing Bible, you know, that's a great time to do that. We used to actually read our Bible during breakfast. So you know what they're eating. So that's a, that's a good time to do that. Um, and then slowly add add things in. You know, if you're looking at English, you know, or language arts, whatever, maybe add some of that in the next week. Um, and then you know, if you're doing math, you add math in the following. And if you're doing science, so just kind of go slow, and um, and have fun with it and experiment with. You know, what might work one day, maybe not won't work, you know, the next week, whatever. So you can always, you know, don't feel that you have to be so rigid that it has to be exactly like this. You can definitely, you know, change it up whenever you need to. For sure. Judy. So I'm a, by nature, an organizer. And so as I've had a chance to talk to people as well, um, I've tried to think of a step-by-step -step process you could come up with because people like solid concrete ideas. And so one of my friends, I said, you know, maybe you think about a balance between academics and play and teamwork and rest because kids are used to schedule. If your kids are, are coming out of a classroom setting, they're used to uh, showing up at school at a certain time and they get to take a lunch break at a certain time. And so part of kids being uneasy now is that they they don't have that schedule. And so make that schedule for them. Um, help them manage their expectations. Maybe you say, okay, we're going to do academics from 9 to 9.30. And then you're going to get a break. You know, um, give them break time, play time, relaxation time. This is not all work and no play. And the other thing that I used to find really helpful with my kids was what we call teamwork. Uh, some people call them chores. We call them teamwork. Um, <laughs> And so it's, it just refers to the idea that we all live here and we all eat here and we all sleep here. And so we all need to work together to make it work. So help them to figure out where they fit in and how they can help. And then absolutely uh, rest, you know, especially for younger kids. Stick with their regular bedtime just because they're not getting up in the morning and getting on a bus doesn't mean that they um, shouldn't still um, have a regular bedtime during the week. Again, manage expectations. And then the other thing that I think is very helpful to remember is, especially now that your kids are home all day and there are messes that weren't there before during the day, and um, organize things. You know, three quick tips for organizing. Find a container or a shelf or a bin or whatever for each child's academic stuff. And at the end of every day, everybody's school stuff needs to go back where it lives. Uh, not on the couch, not on the kitchen table. It needs to go back where it lives. And so help each child to discover a, a home for their stuff. And then involve your kids in making a list of those team activities, those chores. Um, assign each of your kids something to do and the next week rotate it. Um, and constantly tell them, keep reminding them we're a team and you're doing a great job for the team. And then finally, when it comes to food, because people don't stop eating just because things in the world have gone crazy, <laughs> um, create a weekly menu and let your kids help you figure it out. What, you know, what should we eat this week and focus on nutrition and, you know, what would make a, a fun and color, colorful meal or what would taste good and then let them help you make it um, and then let them help you clean it up. So um, just maybe some quick tips so you have some concrete ideas for getting things scheduled and organized in your home. Very good. I also want to say I've heard, I think a lot of people want it to be exactly like school. What yeah. am I going to do with them for seven hours? You know, so um, it doesn't, it doesn't no. need to be that long. So just don't remember, it doesn't have to mimic, you know, what, brick and mortar schools look like. The other thing is also reading is the most important thing. Yes. It really, really is. Of anything you can do, reading is the thing, you know? So mm -hmm. you really want to make sure that your kids are reading books, you're reading to them. Um, and then uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention was, um, your kids won't get behind 
They won't. Everybody else is out of school too. So anything you can do to help them at this point, the biggest thing you can do is read and, um, you know, just add the subjects right along with it, help them stay where they are. And if you are inclined to give them more, you certainly can do that as well. So those are things I I've sort of collected (laughs) along the way as well. Um, so what about a schedule? Like, how does that look? Everyone is sort of scrambling. Think about the the working parent or think about, you know, even the parent who's just not used to having their kids. How can we sort of guide them into a schedule? Well, I think what you just said, Steph, is the biggest thing to remember. And that is everybody's situation at home is different. So there is no right schedule and no wrong schedule everybody's schedule is going to look different from everybody else's, but maybe just a really quick um, outline of how you might approach it. Start off your day with what we call table work. Um, I used to say to my kids, your brains are freshest when you first get up in the morning. So let's do things like math or language arts or phonics when you're fresh and I'm fresh and, and I can help you with those things. And then remember to build in regular breaks and make them active breaks. You know, you look at the kids and say, okay, we're going to take a break for a few minutes. Don't let them immediately go to a screen somewhere. Um, Get them outside. They need to burn off some of that energy so that they can come back and focus again. So build in those breaks. And as you've already emphasized, read aloud, read, read, read when they're eating lunch you can occupy their minds while they're occupying their stomachs. So read, read, read aloud. And the lifesaver for me when I had my kids at home all day was I created a quiet time after lunch. I didn't care how old you were. If you were young enough to need a nap, this is when you got your nap. If you were too old to need a nap, this is when you got to do some independent reading or work on a project, or maybe there's some craft that your kids really enjoy doing. Um, that quiet time was necessary for them. And it was also necessary for my sanity. So, so build that into your time. Barb, I'm sure you have other great ideas for scheduling. Yeah. Yeah. Those are some great ideas. Um, For people that are working, I actually talked to um, a customer yesterday. Um, She, that was her predicament. She was going to be working and she wasn't, didn't know what to do um, because she's working. She's only working four hours, but she had her mom that was actually going to come help her um, watch the kids. So she was going to, um, you know, do the explanation of the math programs and whatever for the kids the day before. And then the mom was Mm -hmm. going to oversee, you know, what um, the kids were going to be doing. So she would have some schooling done while they were, um, while they were working. And she was going to move her shifts around. She asked her employer if she could work the day shift versus the evening shift. So it worked out really well. Um, you know, read at night. That's a really good, um, a good um, that we used to do, you know, because instead of turning on the TV after dinner, we would stay on the couch and read a book. And then um, that was just better for less screen time, you know, also for everybody, for the whole family, not just the kids. Um, yeah, so that's, um, you know, snacks. Uh, so I would, uh, our, our boys are always a little hungry. So we always, when they got grouchy, like we always thought, I thought, well, why so grouchy? And I was like, they were hungry. So we just gave them a real good protein snack, you know, cheese, peanut butter, whatnot. That helped their learning process, actually, uh, with their, uh, if their stomachs weren't talking to them, they could actually think, you know, a little better, um, you know, with their math problems. Um, so, yeah. I wanted to just add that um, my children love Legos and they love Mad Libs. And yesterday, I think we were learning about adverbs. Like we were like, what's an adverb? And so even something as simple as that is learning. They're learning even though they're not in, you know, looking at a language arts book or in a math class, you know, they're thinking about how they're putting a puzzle together. They're doing their, those brains are thinking. So um, that was the other thing is you just have to sort of think about it outside the box because. um, And if you can get outside, you know, that's, that's a, that's a big thing. If depending on where you live um, I've talked to you, like, even here, I I can see, you know, kids riding their bikes and they're out on the swings and they're outside now and, um, and go for a nature walk. You know, look at the, the trees that are now, um, you know, blooming or blossoming um, with their buds. Take a look. You know, they might not notice that any other time of the year. You know, but just look at just look at nature, you know, and, and just enjoy 
enjoy the time, um, you know, with your kids. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We were uh, speaking of that. We were uh, we're in Colorado, and it freezes at night still here. And right now, there's a giant snowstorm. Um, but uh, we learned about what the temperature, what how cold water has to be to freeze and the levels that will freeze that. So like if it's, if, if it's this deep, if it's this deep, like we let, we learned, they just were so fascinated by freezing water. And so we fostered that, you know, like, okay, well let's learn about that. And then you can play with it. <laughs> so, anyway. um, so here's something I think we've sort of touched on, but it's also good. I think uh, how long, how much time do you really spend learning specifically. So I wanted to say, I heard a lot of people say, even if you're just reading a chapter or two, that's something, you know? So, so I, I wanted to throw that out there uh, in the beginning, but typically how long do you think it takes? Well, I think someone said to me once, and I always hung on to this, that you get yourself into a mindset where you are living a lifestyle of learning. And so based on what you were just saying about learning about ice and and how water freezes because it's snowing and that's and that's what your reality is right now um, that's that's learning you are you are making the adjustment and saying no matter what happens in our lives we're going to learn something from it and so that is timeless there is no end time for that but as far as actual scheduled academics um, I would say by lunchtime, be done, you know, get your kids up fresh in the morning, start working on those things. Maybe you have a packet from school that, that you need to work through that, that your child's um, teacher has sent home. Get that work done by lunchtime and then know that you can use the afternoon to work on projects or crafts or maybe they need to catch up on something they didn't quite finish. Um, but most of all, I would say don't don't drag school into the evening, you know, don't let it roll over and overwhelm your day. Um, make it short and sweet and then use the rest of the time to learn together. Yeah, it's also a good time to maybe um, do some decluttering. Um, you know, I've, I've actually been doing that myself. <laughs> um, you know, just look at things like, I, and what, like, what do I really need? <laughs> and then just, you know, show your kids some organizational skills. So yeah, there's, there's so much, there's, there's learning in everything all the time. Yeah even without, you know, a curriculum. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so we, t we sort of touched on this. I know, Barbara, you were talking about that specific customer, but a lot of people are now working from home full time and they have their kids at home with them and they're trying to, you know, continue a little bit of that education or maybe they're not and they just need ideas on how to um, really focus in on working while still entertaining their children or making sure their children um, are busy. What do you guys think? Barbara? Yeah, oh, sorry. So, sorry. I, I think um, this is a good time. I was reminded of this last week when I was talking with somebody that one of the goals that we had when we were raising our kids was we wanted to help them develop the heart of a servant. We wanted them to view the world around them, not by what can you do for me, but rather if I see a need, then maybe I can meet a need. And so especially now we know that um, people in nursing homes are not able to see their families. Right now things are locked down. Um, there are um, older folks maybe that live in your neighborhood that are just needing some assistance. So brainstorm ideas, sit down and talk with your kids and describe those scenarios. And how can we help those people? Maybe, maybe we make cards or we write notes and we send them to folks who are um, staying in a nursing home, or maybe um, we call Family far away. Exactly. Or maybe we call the next door elderly neighbor and say, is there anything you need from the store? I can run to the store and I can drop the bag outside on your front step or your front porch just help your kids constantly instead of focusing on how this is um, impacting me and how it's um, you know causing my life to be all upended. Think about how you can help other people. Yeah, exactly. And for um, for those that might be working from home, 
that that's it, you know it can be a little challenging um, because that's a whole new dynamic for them and yourself. So it's it's a whole new uh, thing. So number one is um, I would say probably um, if you have if they're young young you know I'm sure you've got someone there that's going to be you know I don't know <laughs> like a baby but um, but I think a lot of employers are you know they they understand that's the thing everybody understands that kids are home and you're home working so it's going to be a transition period. Um, to take a to take a breath and and relax and say okay, not a good day today, but tomorrow might be better. Um, but give your give your kids something to do. If you need to make a phone call to a customer or something, say you know explain to your child, give me fifteen minutes. You know here do this and then I'll be back. You know and let them sit at the kitchen table while you sit at your desk. Sometimes um, you know you could if you have an office or wherever you're working, they could work alongside you. Like you're doing your work and they might be sitting next to you at the table, you know, doing their math or their language art, right? So, I mean, you know, so they will be sitting there. Um, yes. Um, my niece, uh, she actually took her daughter to work in the insurance office and that's, it was great. So she was paying, you know, she was being the secretary, you know, and she's two. So it's, um, it's, it's just, um, it's just being flexible, um, you know, giving your kids something to do. Um, I even had my boys at times do jumping jacks. They need to burn off some energy and the weather wasn't good outside. So they were a little hefty to tell me yes, like do like 20 of them, you know, just to burn something off. Um, but that's it. Just yeah, like Judy said, it's it's teamwork, you know, also in that regard. Um, but just work together, you know, and then maybe show them what you're doing with your job. Maybe they're interested, you know, explain like this is what I'm doing, you know, this is my job, and they can maybe learn something along the business aspect of of life, you know, what that looks like. So yeah, just involve them. Um, but, you know, that they have to understand that if you're talking to a customer, they need to kind of pipe down for a few minutes, you know, while you can get done what you need to get done. Um, and some of it might be involved um, for schooling. You might have to do some of it in the evening, you know, whether it's grading something or the read louds or, you know, um, you know doing some uh, language arts or whatnot. It might have to be done early before you go to work, you know, or a little bit later, you know, after you get off work to get all that done on a, on a daily basis. I wanted to say that um, we are definitely writing le letters to uh, grandparents who are far away, cousins who are far away, um, and we are FaceTiming a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's the other thing is like sometimes I'm like, why don't you just FaceTime grandma right now? Good Please. idea. Well, FaceTime oh. grandma. Here's my phone. Awesome. Awesome. Grandma. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so as we, I. Sunlight is a literature-based curriculum. We believe that reading books is very important. Um, also, all your teachers and the American Pediatric Society believes it as well. So I wanna talk a little bit about why reading um, is really the key element to schooling at home. Um, maybe we could talk a little bit about the summer slide and how we don't want it to affect what's going on here. Um, as well, but I don't know, Barbara, can you? Yeah. So, um, so, so the, you know, reading, um, it's really, it's a, I guess, I guess it's a natural approach to learning. It's not a textbook, right? It's not a workbook. It's not a structured, you know, Q and A type thing. It's really learning, um, all sorts of things. You know, you could pick up a book and, um, you know, Charlotte's Web, you know, there's learning in there, right? Um, how to work together, you know, and uh, friendship and love um, and family and character. There's so much to learn in reading um, that um, you can relate. It's relatable, you know, to your everyday life. Um, so that's, um, that's good. So even as you uh, read to your children when they were babies and toddlers, you know, uh, on sitting on your lap, you know, that can carry on. It can carry on into um, middle school and junior high and even in high school. There were a few books that I read to my sons in high school, um, To Kill a Mockingbird. I never read that in high school. I thought, I don't want to miss that book. So um, Moby Dick. I never read Moby Dick. So we did that. So and, and they enjoyed it. And it was a great discussion, you know. So um, so that's that's really so continue um, you know, being positive um, about uh, the interaction with them and uh, talk about the the good points in these characters, you know, um, what you appreciate in the, in the stories. So, um, so yeah, so reading is, uh, there's so much to learn in, in books. Reading, reading, gives, reading gives context to what you're learning. Um, unlike a workbook where 
Um, you know, you've got snippets of information here and there and you answer the question and then you walk away and probably by the next day you've forgotten what you saw in your workbook. But when you when you learn information wrapped in the form of a story, it, it creates context and it makes those connections in your brain. And I mean, even now, think about a really uh, great novel that you read that maybe last year and you still remember it because you connected with those characters and you felt what they felt and um, you learned what they learned. And so, yeah, it's, it's just a great way to learn a lot of things. It's a great way to, um, to like leave the world behind, you know, what's mm -hmm. happening and just get focused on this other reality that's in the story, you know, to make, to kind of focus on that versus what's really going on, you know, with everything else. So that's, you know, that's, 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 um, that's another good um, idea for reading. Yeah. Absolutely. So what do you say to parents who are worried about their kids' education? Hmm. I think most importantly, first of all, they need to focus on what needs to be done today. Um, you know, there's, there's not a lot of the school year left. Fortunately, this didn't happen in September. Um, it happened in March. And so there's not a huge amount of the school year left. And like you said, Steph, earlier, everybody's kids are out of school. So nobody's getting behind. We're all in this together. And so, you know, maybe continue to, to push forward and work on those packets that teachers have sent home and make a list of things that interest your students. Maybe they can learn some new things that weren't on the uh, scope and sequence for their classroom learning this year. But maybe your kids have something like learning about how water freezes <laughs> that they never knew. And, and now they get a chance to learn something exciting. And um, yeah, I think I think that's a great way to approach that sense of worry. So the other thing that we have on our list, sorry, Barbara, is um, we, we're going to learn about the elections. <laughs> it's a perfect time for that. Um, we downloaded, loaded a free um, some nights free elections unit study and mm -hmm. we're going through it. <laughs> and That's I forgot cool. what I was going to say. Oh, <laughs> Come back to me. This is not unusual. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so the other thing is there's a lot of people with multiple children at home um, with different grades, different, um, they just have different needs, you know, depending on the age. How do you think that, you know, they sh they can approach that to make sure they're doing yeah. what they need to do? Yeah. You know, I, I think I mentioned it a little bit earlier in our conversation, but you kind of have to think about schoolwork in two different categories. Uh, one is table work and the other is couch work. So Table work is just what it sounds like. It's what your kid sits at the table to do. It's it's one on one. It's skill based. Think um, math or spelling or vocabulary. That's table work. Um, and then couch work is what you share because lots of people can fit on a couch. And so think history and Bible and science. And couch work is where you're going to save time with those uh, multiple ages. Because I think it was Barbara that mentioned Charlotte's Web. You know, Charlotte's Web is not written to one age or one grade. Um, I loved Charlotte's Web as an adult when I went back and reread it. So couch time is where you're going to save time. It's where you're going to build relationship because you're learning together. So I, I think um, kind of maybe keeping in mind that you can divide your schoolwork up that way. Um, helps you with having to teach kids of different grades and ages. And I remembered what I was going to say earlier. Um, so keep in mind that it is March. So this, so your kids have already learned, like say they're in second grade, they have learned so much already what was expected in second grade. You know, a lot of them might even be ready for the next grade, you know, subject wise. So, you know, don't feel like you've got to now all of a sudden just do all this on grade two all over again. But they're, they're just progressing. Um, so just fill in the gaps, you know, with whatever, you know, they give you, the school gives you um, that you might need um, just to, you know, just to get them, you know, where they keep them where they are. 
And you know, this is a great time to help your older kids realize that they can teach their younger siblings. Maybe they read out loud to them or they color with them or maybe they help them with their math um, workbook page or it's a great way to build relationship between siblings. Absolutely. And I have an older girl and a younger boy, so that works out real well. (laughs) She always wants to be the teacher, which is great. Um, So the last question is something we've heard over and over again. And I think, um, I think it's just, it's a difficult one because it's a transition period and it's a scary period, but um, how would you advise parents who are experiencing their children being resistant, resistant to school at home? That's tough. Wow. It is. It is tough. I will say, I want to, I want to just say, give yourself time because all of that stuff didn't happen. You know, they didn't walk into third grade knowing exactly how to act. They went through kindergarten and first grade and second grade. So they know how they're acting in third grade. So there's a little period of, you know, adjustment for you, for them. And it's scary right now. So just like, I think that's where I'm like, well, eh, okay. We won't, we won't do that. And that was another thing I I wanted to make sure we talked about is if it gets too hard, if, if people are too frustrated in the situation, walk away, away. leave it. Yeah. Yeah. There's no reason to push. Grace. Uh, Give yourself lots and lots of grace. (laughs) Right. I've spoken to a few people over the last couple of days that that's kind of what they're seeing because the, the the children are used to them being mom just mom and not being the teacher. So that's a kind of a transition that they're, especially for the little older ones that they're struggling with, that they are being resistant. Um, So I just recommended, you know, take take a week and go have fun. Just go have fun with everything, you know, and and not worry about the academic part of it. And then um, just take your time, like I mentioned earlier, just take your time, introduce one thing and and just explain, you know, this is a temporary, you know, and, and we'll get through it together. Um, and then, you know, um, just work with them. And like, like Stephanie said, if it's, if it doesn't, it's not going well, you walk away <laughs> and then yeah, maybe the next day, you know, and find their, um, you know, find where they're, um, where they learn best, the time of day. Um, I've talked to even a few people where learning in the evening is better for some children. Uh, for mine, like Judy's, it was definitely in the morning. Um, but some some kids just love to do, you know, math and, and language arts in the, in the evening, you know, or after dinner. So let them, you know, work through it as well, because they the kids are also struggling um, with this huge transition. So in time, you know, it, it, it'll it'll be OK. And we're in this together. Tell them, you know, this is a big change for you. Well, guess what? <laughs> this is a huge change for me. So we're going to get through this together. Absolutely. For all the parents. Every parent is experiencing yes. change. If you're yes. a homeschool parent, if you're, uh, you know, you send your kids to a public school or private school, every parent is stuck at home with their children yes. right now and not yes. doing their social activities. Yes. So, even um, ones with little babies, you know, um, on exactly. the ones that are like toddlers, like they cannot go at any, you know, hardly any place. So they're stuck at home too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So we really are all in this together. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for joining me and talking about this stuff. I want to give everyone a virtual hug because we're all in our home offices now. Um, And uh, we just hope that you all stay well and, um, you know, hang in there. Keep calm and school at home. (laughs) Bye, guys. Bye.